my name is Alyssa and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing four absolutely amazing casserole recipes. These casseroles are super easy to throw together, could be made earlier in the day and then popped in the oven later in the day when it's time to get dinner started, and they're of course delicious. So I just wanna point out that all of the ingredients along with the measurements will be listed down below in the description box for you. All right, so with all that said, I hope you enjoy the video. Let's go get started. So to get us started off, I'm gonna be sharing this delicious and super easy creamy ham and peas rigatoni casserole. So here's everything you're going to need for this casserole recipe. You're gonna need some form of ham. If you have some leftover ham, you can throw that in. I just purchased two packs of the Smithfield cubed ham and then some minced garlic, some low sodium chicken broth, some butter, some rigatoni pasta, some type of cheese. I went with Cheddar Jack, some sharp cheddar would be good too, some sour cream, some milk, and then peas. So the first thing I did was get my oven to preheat at 350 degrees. And then I got my nine by 13 casserole dish sprayed with some cooking spray. And then I just filled a large pot with some water and added in a generous amount of salt. And I got that on my burner to start heating up for my pasta. So next I just got started on my sauce. So if you wanna skip these extra few steps I'm about to share with you and you want something that you can just completely throw together without the added work, you can just use a can of cream of chicken soup in place of what I'm about to do. So I'm pretty much going to be making a homemade cream of chicken soup myself. So I first just got my saucepan over medium to high heat and I added in about three tablespoons of salted butter. So I just let the butter melt down completely and then I added in one tablespoon of flour and I whisked that together. And next I added in about a half a cup of low sodium chicken broth and half a cup of milk. So I just stirred it while it came to a low simmer and then I added in one teaspoon of salt and one teaspoon of pepper. I whisked it while it cooked and thickened up. Once it completely thickened up, I just removed it from the heat. So once the water was done boiling for my pasta, I just put my pasta in the pot and I cooked it per the directions on the box. And then once it was done cooking, I just drained that and I put the pasta into a large mixing bowl. You can also put it right back into the pot that you cooked your pasta in, so less dishes and mix everything in there. But for the sake of this video, I just used a glass mixing bowl just so everything could be seen clearly. In the mixing bowl, I just added in the pasta and then I also included one and a half cups of milk, one cup of sour cream, two tablespoons of minced garlic. Add, I also added in two cups of cooked ham, one cup of frozen peas, and then I put in my homemade cream of chicken soup. If you didn't do your own homemade version, you could just put in the can of cream of chicken soup here instead. And I also seasoned it with some pepper. I mixed it all up really well. And then I just transferred this to my greased casserole dish. And then I sprinkled one cup of cheese on top. I put it in the oven for about 25 minutes or so. I just was looking to get the cheese fully melted. This is the perfect casserole to do when you have some leftover ham that you need to use up. It comes out so creamy and delicious and it's the perfect comfort meal. The next casserole I have to share with you is this awesome baked spaghetti and ricotta cheese casserole. The first thing I did was get a large pot filled with water and I put a generous amount of salt in it. I was just getting this ready to get it over my stove top to start heating it up for my spaghetti. I then set my oven to preheat at 375. Next, I just diced up half of an onion. So next, I just got a large skillet over medium to high heat. I just added my ground beef into it and I started to crumble that up with my spatula. I let it cook fully through and then I just wanted to make sure I got most of the grease out. So I added a paper towel into it to kind of pick up all of that grease. I then added in my half of a diced onion and two tablespoons of minced garlic. And then I just added in my seasoning. So I did about one tablespoon of Italian seasoning and about two teaspoons of Kinder's, the blend seasoning, which is just salt, pepper, and garlic. If you don't have it, don't worry about it. And then one teaspoon of salt and one teaspoon of pepper. And then I just gave it a good mix. And then after it cooked for a few, I just added in a 24 ounce jar of tomato sauce. I went with the tomato and basil kind, but you can go with whatever kind you love. And then I just gave it a good stir just to incorporate the sauce really well. 
my water for the pasta came to a boil while I was cooking the meat mixture. So I just added in a pound of spaghetti pasta to the water and I just cooked it per the directions on the box. Next, I just took a medium sized mixing bowl and I added in my five ounces of softened cream cheese just to soften it. I put it in the microwave for about 20 seconds or so. And I also added into the mixing bowl 15 ounces of ricotta cheese and one cup of Parmesan cheese. And then I just mixed it up really well. So I just set that aside and then I just took a large mixing bowl and I added in my cooked spaghetti and sauce into it and I gave it a good toss. So next I just sprayed my 9x13 casserole dish with some cooking spray and then I added in half of the spaghetti and sauce mixture to the bottom of the dish. So pretty much what we're doing here is we're kind of resembling lasagna. We're going to be layering the spaghetti mixture with the cheese mixture. So next I just layered in half of the ricotta cheese mixture on top of the spaghetti and I took a small spatula to spread it across evenly and then I just repeated that. So the final touch to this before we pop it in the oven is I just put a few slices of provolone cheese on top. You could really use any cheese you have on hand. I just broke it up into small pieces and layered that on top of the ricotta mixture. You can even use shredded cheese if you had that instead. Next, I just put this in the oven to bake for about 30 minutes and that's it. It's that easy. This casserole turned out so creamy and delicious and everyone loved it. The next casserole I have to share with you is a super easy chicken pot pie casserole. So first I set my oven to preheat at 400 degrees. So the first thing I needed to do was prep my veggies. So I diced up about one cup of carrots, a half a cup of diced celery, and I diced up half of an onion. And then I had the already pre-sliced mushrooms, so I just measured out about one cup of mushrooms. Next, I got my Dutch oven over medium to high heat. If you don't have a Dutch oven, don't worry about it. Just use any large pot that you have. And I just added in five tablespoons of salted butter. I melted down the butter, and then I just added in all of my prepped veggies. So the carrots, celery, mushrooms, and onions. I seasoned my veggies with about a teaspoon of salt and a teaspoon of pepper. I cooked that for about five to six minutes just until the onions were translucent and I stirred it occasionally. So as the veggies cooked, I just prepped my chicken breast. So I find it really easy just to purchase the rotisserie chicken from the grocery store and shred that up. If you don't want to do that, you could also cook your own chicken. I would do about two to three large chicken breasts, just cook them fully and then shred them with two forks. So once the veggies were cooked down, I added in about two tablespoons of some minced garlic. I also added in about two tablespoons of some cooking wine and I just scraped the bottom of the pot with the wooden spoon, just trying to get all of the little brown bits. And then I just let the cooking wine cook down for just a minute or two. Then I just added in about a quarter cup of flour and I stirred it constantly for about two minutes. I then added in three cups of low sodium chicken broth and a quarter cup of heavy cream and I just gave it a good stir. So once it thickened up quite a bit, I added in about three cups of shredded chicken. I also added in one cup of frozen peas and a few tablespoons of fresh parsley, which the parsley is completely optional. So next I just poured it in my 9x13 casserole dish and then I just took a can of biscuits and I lined each biscuit on top of the casserole dish. So full disclosure, I just want to point out that I've found with certain brands of biscuits that they'll come out a little undercooked if I cook them according to the directions on the package. So I always cook them a little bit longer. And if you don't want to deal with that, with the possibility of them coming out undercooked, just put your biscuits onto a separate cookie sheet and bake them at the same time your casserole is baking and just top your casserole when you serve it with one of your biscuits. So I started out baking mine for about 20 minutes. I added on an additional about five minutes just to make sure my biscuits were cooked. And when it came out of the oven, I just brushed the biscuits with about one tablespoon of melted butter. And then I sprinkled on a little bit of flaky salt. So the last casserole I have to share with you is chicken divan. This is actually my mother-in-law's recipe. She gave it to me years ago after my husband and I had gotten married. I've tweaked it over the years, but it's an awesome casserole. So here's everything you're going to need for this casserole. You're going to need about two or three chicken breasts, some cream of chicken soup, some olive oil, some minced garlic, some mayonnaise, low sodium chicken broth, some onion, 
some lemon. I like to put rice in mine, some broccoli, some shredded cheese, and then some milk. So I first started out prepping my onion. I diced up half of an onion and then I just set that aside. I then moved on to get my chicken breast ready. I took three chicken breasts and I cut them into small cube shapes and then I just seasoned them with some salt and pepper. I then added a tablespoon or two of some olive oil to a large scale over medium to high heat and I just heated that up for a few. I added in my diced onion and then I just lightly seasoned that with some salt and pepper. So then I added in my cube chicken and I cooked that until it was brown and no longer pink. So about five minutes or so. And then I also added in about two tablespoons of minced garlic. So while my chicken was cooking, I got my rice and a pot off on the side to start cooking. And then I moved on to get my sauce ready. So I mixed one can of cream of chicken soup with a third cup of milk, three quarters cup of chicken broth and a quarter cup of mayonnaise. I also added in one tablespoon of lemon juice and one teaspoon of pepper. So after my sauce was done, I got some fresh broccoli into a pot to cook that for a few. You could also do frozen broccoli if you'd prefer that and just pre-cook it before adding it into the casserole dish. I've also added just frozen broccoli directly to this casserole before putting it into the oven and that turns out okay too. But my favorite way of making this is just using fresh broccoli that I pre-cook for just a few before adding it into the bowl with everything else. I then just added everything into the bowl and I mixed it all up really well. I poured it all into a nine by 13 casserole dish and I topped it with about one cup of shredded cheese. You can use whatever cheese you love here. And then I just popped it into my preheated 350 degree oven for 30 minutes. I just wanted that cheese nice and bubbly and melted. This is one of my husband's favorite casseroles because like I said earlier, it's his mom's recipe and he grew up eating it. It always turns out so good and it truly is a comfort food. All right, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found a casserole that you're looking forward to making. And if you're new here, I'd love to have you. So make sure to subscribe down below. I'll be posting more videos just like this one and many others. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.